Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the tender webinar for a clinical data repository based on the open electronic health record standards for the Catalan healthcare uh, system. This webinar is a unique opportunity to learn more about the tender that has been opened by the government of Catalonia, Catalan Health Department, and is open now for the submissions until the 21st of December. So it means that there is still good time, well, two, uh, three, three and a half weeks to prepare the uh, tender documentation to address this uh, opportunity and be one of those who will um, help the government of Catalonia to, to prepare this clinical data repository. So Catalonia is moving towards a future in which concepts such as patient-centric, data-centric, electronic healthcare records, integrated care, open platform, and clinical knowledge management are routine practice. For this vision to become reality, Catalonia is using the innovation and purchasing power of the public sector to reshape the surrounding ecosystem. So the region has recently published a request for proposals, which aims to procure the clinical knowledge management platform service according to uh, with the open electronic health record standard. Karolina Moskiewicz, I'm the Innovation Director at the European Connected Health Alliance that has the pleasure to co-host, co-organize this webinar for our members, partners, and digital health ecosystem and bring this opportunity to you. And uh, just shortly about the ECH Alliance, we are the membership organization and also um, the organization that brings together the digital more than 70 ecosystems across the globe. We bring together more than 20,000 experts in, from the different countries, from all the continents. And our mission is to connect the community, bring the knowledge, gener help generate the innovation and that uh, promotes the global health transformation. So in short, we bring together the community of the experts, the knowledge, uh, and then coming back to our webinar, I will just ask my colleagues to uh, jump in. Yes, thank you so much. Coming back to webinar with me today, there were three uh, colleagues, three representatives of the government of Catalonia, Catalan Health Department that will present you with this opportunity and also answer uh, some of your questions. I mentioned some of the tender. So they cannot give you more information that is publicly available. They will not be able to address some of the questions uh, that might give you some advantage over the people who are uh, not uh, here at this webinar. So all the information that is being shared today is the information to, uh, that, that is shared elsewhere. Um, and also, I would like to mention that, of course, this is so we will share this uh, with you after after the webinar. So if you um, if I, um, miss some notes or some information, we are happy to, to provide you with this. So let me introduce some, uh, my colleagues from the from the Catalan Health Department who are here uh, to to provide all this information to you. Uh, we have with us Luis Baia, who has a bachelor degree in computer science and an MBA experience in the field of information systems, processes, and technologies, strategic planning and management. And he has participated in the design of the Catalan Health Information System Master Plan. He's managing the clinical knowledge management team on that plan. Uh, we have also Tony Mira, who has a bachelor's degree in computer engineering. Uh, Tony has more than 15 years of experience building architecture critical systems in the public health, and he's the principal solution architect for the Department of Health of Catalonia. And then we also have Daniel Alomar, who has a bachelor's and master's degree in engineering and a master's degree in cybersecurity and privacy. 
has more than 15 years of experience in technology companies from the healthcare sector, is the portfolio and program management for the Catalan Health Information System Master Plan. We have here uh, with us like uh, really people who are behind uh, the master plan for the Catalan Health Information System. So people will definitely can learn from, and uh, if not on the center, I am sure that they are also happy to collaborate with uh, different stakeholders on the different aspects of digital health, uh, as I see from their uh, broad portfolio. But without the further ado, I'm sure you all want to hear about this uh, center, uh, what is their be able to submit your response. So I will uh, give the floor to, to Daniel to introduce you to all the conditions and background for the tender. Daniel, okay. the floor is yours. Thanks. Thanks, Carol. Let me share the screen. I don't know. We, we are thinking. Uh, we don't see your screen yet. Uh... Okay, let me check. Okay. Can you see it? Can you see yes, the screen? Yes, we can see it very well. Yes. Thanks, Carol. And on behalf of the Catalan Health uh, Department, we would like to thank you to the to the ETA Alliance Group to invite us to this webinar. First, we would like to mention that we are a large team of people working on that pioneering shift. And without the leadership of Jordi Piedas, this journey that begins with this step would not be possible. Thanks to the people who make this possible. We have organized this presentation in three parts. First, we are going to provide an overview of the Catalan health system. Then we are going to explain the objectives of the digital health strategy for Catalonia and the master plan goals. And finally, we are going to explain how we have raised this standard. Uh, we have disclaimer, this document is strictly informative and this webinar, the information that we provide in this webinar is strictly informative. It does not supplement or amend the standard that we, can be found at this URL. And any query of the request for additional information about the standard must be addressed to the email that appears on the screen and in accordance with the public tender process. The, or the, aim, the main aim of this document is to provide an overview of the main characteristics of, of the tender recently published by the Catalan Health and System Service under the, data, under the title Clinical Knowledge Management Platform Service in accordance with the open air standard for the Catalan government. As the tender publisher only in Catalan, we aim this document and this webinar also to serve the purpose to facilitate international bidders in the process of understanding the nature of the service requested. So, first of all, uh, also this information included is included in the in the tender literacy. But uh, we think it's important to uh, frame the tender in our present and the present status of the Catalan health systems. Um, you can see uh, this, in this slide the, the main uh, the main figures of the Catalan health system. I mean, about ten million population. Uh, is is a public public healthcare system with universal coverage. I mean, we are giving service to eight million uh, people, and with a uh, uh, huge uh, figures related with investment and, the, and expenses and the number uh, related with the number of facilities. This is part of the of the frame. The the, the key part of the frame is that it's a very fragmented. Uh, healthcare systems. We have about 160 healthcare entities. These are, these are uh, uh, approximate figures. I mean, uh, more than 160. And uh, these uh, 160 healthcare pro uh, facility entities uh, are running more than uh, uh, 16,000 uh, applications. We have the advantage the, that our primary care uh, application is mainly uh, supporting the whole primary care activities, but at the hospital systems, we have uh, more than 29 uh, products, uh, thinking on uh, hospital information systems. I mean, if we think about the uh, niche uh, applications, laboratory uh, diagnosis, uh, imaging, 
is uh, we will see later uh, a lot more of uh, of uh, you see uh, a big complexity, a huge complexity. But uh, the nowadays uh, digital health platform covers the whole care process. Uh, you can uh, imagine uh, that the covering the, the this whole whole health process from the uh, primary care moving to electronic prescribing uh, uh, with derivation to a specialist uh, specialized care or to internally uh, to hospitals having analytics uh, uh, specific analytics or imaging uh, um, activities uh, also having a uh, uh, what we name La Meva Salud, a uh, complete web portal for, for citizens. Uh, we are covering the whole uh, process. And uh, you can imagine with the fragmentation of providers and the fragmentation of applications, we have uh, really, we are a real masters about interoperability between systems. Uh, we think that we have uh, covered completely the, the interoperability uh, uh, Mm, issue. We have also a big advantage that uh, on this, we'll see later, uh, in this process uh, has been created a complete uh, shared electronic health record uh, based on uh, HL7 CDA. I mean, we have made also not, also, not only interoperability, also an effort to standardize as much as we, have, we can uh, the information that is uh, running all across, uh, all, all through this, uh, this, this process. In terms of uh, a structure of the Catalan uh, health platform, and this is also a very important thing to, to, to take in consideration, is that we have evolved this uh, complete platform, but uh, through the years starting with this niche, uh, niche uh, application, primary care, from the, from the 1980 or 1990s. And uh, okay, with, with evolution, I mean, it's not the same application for sure, but, but we are also, uh, we are still have this, in some cases, the same platform, technical platform from the, from the 90s. After that, we have uh, created this, uh, okay, after that, we have created this uh, shared health record uh, based on uh, HL7 CDA, uh, interconnected with the prescription, interconnected with the digital imaging archive. This is a central repository for uh, just, um, let me say, uh, final information about uh, uh, health activities. Uh, I mean, uh, lab uh, results, uh, clinical reports, uh, and so on. We have interconnected, interoperated all these niche uh, platforms through a, um, let me simplify, a bus management, even bus management, I mean, with a, with a lot of uh, standardization. But uh, this is an interoperability platform. And <laughs> as uh, a lot of uh, health systems. Uh, from the pandemic, we have uh, had a big uh, increase of uh, remote consultation. And also we are moving to uh, interconnect also medical devices with the platform we have seen, uh, we have seen before. Uh, this is the same figure. I mean, this is the same idea, but to give uh, an idea about the frame of, uh, of sizing. Uh, as we have said, uh, we have just, or mainly one uh, primary care uh, electronic medical record system, 29 uh, products for hospital intermediate care, more than 29. We have also different social care record systems. Mm, we are giving service and we have a master index of about 8 million people. Okay, I will not go through all these figures you will see on the, the, on the presentation. But uh, the question is that we are moving these uh, huge figures through a very fragmented and very complex system that uh, continuously are interoperating between the different, uh, the different uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, as a big frame of, of the tender, we are starting, our starting point is an ecosystem of application mm, that, and this is uh, other very important thing, uh, uh, has completely uh, buried business logic and data models. I mean, uh, each application has their own data model, of course, to make this interoperation, uh, we need to uh, interchange information in a standard ways, you know, but at the end, business logic and data models and together in the applications. Uh, when we see data models means data and semantic of the data, I mean information. I mean, the information is varied inside the application. As we have seen, we have started this uh, this process at the 19th and still we have some, uh, some platforms that has this uh, old fashioned uh, uh, infrastructure. It means, uh, let me be very clear, a huge technical debt. Um, the communication is uh, between all these players. Uh, okay, we have uh, we are interoperating, but we have not a fully coherent interoperability uh, solution. I mean, in each scale we have made in this process, uh, maybe some specific interoperability uh, standards has been implemented, and at this moment we have. Uh, a lot of interoperability standards. I mean, I mean also is a, a kind of fragmentation in these uh, interoperability solutions. Of course, those, the, all this complexity, all this uh, technical debt means high cost, for sure, and means a um, barrier to develop, to scale up, to move to a more, uh, a more, more, more modern, uh, platform more agile. I mean, every time we need to change something, we need to move this change through uh, different applications and uh, maybe adapt some interoperation uh, standards. Uh, here it means uh, rigid. Uh, uh, this is important because when we uh, when we uh, thought about the tender in the beginning, we will see the the process we follow we follow it. Uh, we were very the clear idea that this is not just a technical movement. Uh, this tender is not a result of, uh, okay, we will move to a more modern uh, infrastructure. We are moving to a different uh, approach to the healthcare systems. We will see, uh, we will see later. To, to you more, some more, okay, uh, again, mm, if you translate the number of EMRs to the number of silos of information. This is not a deep analysis, it's about uh, around, uh, at the end, we have about uh, 16,000 uh, silos of patient related buried in different, uh, in different applications, and each application with their own data model. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just an example. Everybody, if you are, if you are working in that, in that uh, scope, you, you know very well. We have the same act, the same uh, the same um, action, the same prescription in this case, in three different applications, we can have with this, with three different uh, data model structures. Uh, that's okay. Each application works very well. Uh, we can create an interface uh, to interoperate between applications, but at the end, if we can go through, if we want to go through all the information of a patient uh, across her life, uh, his life cycle, uh, means uh, means a big uh, a challenge. Let me say a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. And this uh, uh, we are not. This is not a, our proposal. Is not a EY proposal. But this phrase, I mean, uh, we think that uh, summarizes very well the approach of of the tender. I mean, uh, we are not speaking about application. We are speaking about data. Moreover, we are speaking about information. It means data and meaning. Uh, and we are not thinking on information for, uh, for assistance, for our application. We are thinking on information for uh, the passion health. I mean, uh, we want to start from the passion. We, we, we want to speak about uh, passion health related information. And after that, we will build the applications uh, we need to, to give support to the health activities. 
Okay, that was the, the frame, the, the general frame. Uh, me, no. is, is this the, the general frame of the of the tender? We have we have uh, this situation. Okay, after that, uh, we made at the twenty seventeen. Um, uh, we have a, we had this. Uh, let me say historical starting point that we have explained it. Uh, we yeah, I explained it before. But uh, we started to develop uh, a Catalan information system master plan. You can you can think, okay, it was uh, 2017, uh, and now we are 2022, and we are releasing the the tender. Okay, uh, maybe you don't know, but in uh, Catalonia we had uh, some uh, political uh, problems, some political issues, and uh, it delays a little bit, uh, a little bit. It delays. <laughs> The, the implementation of the Catalan Information System Master Plan. Uh, after these uh, problems, these issues, let me say, uh, uh, started the pandemic that uh, all of you are sure you know the, 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 the problems it, it represented. Uh, but, but, but when we reviewed the Information System Master Plan, we thought that the, the approach we had when we, uh, when we presented it uh, still are completely valid. And what are these these uh, these uh, these goals? The goals we we thought we are thinking on a, a patient centric model. Uh, we want to work. Uh, we want to think about all the care cycle, not uh, silos, not niche, not levels. I mean the whole uh, longitudinal process of a of a care. Uh, care of a passion, mm -hmm. and uh, we are we are moving in a fragmented uh, environment. So we want to work in a strong community governance. I mean, we don't want to have a strictly centralized definition of all everything. We want to work on a community. So we want to have a standard approach uh, based on community, and also this community we are thinking about is not only Catalan, it's also national. I mean, Spanish. And it's also international. This is uh, this is our approach. Um, and of course, uh, we want to have it cheaper than the, the, the situation we have now. That's uh, that's uh, also a very big, very big objective. So we have created a roadmap. You can uh, you have the link on the presentation. You have the link to the information system uh, master plan, so you can read and you can. You can send us uh, questions related with uh, with this information system, but the key point, and now we are going to the tender. I'm sure everybody is waiting for the for the details. But is uh, with this approach that appeared the idea of a unique unique electronic health record. I mean, have a gold record, a gold through uh, gold truth of truth for all information related with the citizen uh, health uh, all along his life or their life. Hmm? We are moving not an application, we are moving uh, and our key point, and this is the focus of the tender, we are moving to data, to information. We are moving to a situation where the evolution of the information uh, kept in this electronic health record will be, as I said, strongly governed in a community with a community, uh, community approach. So, if we are speaking about uh, data, about information, our approach is the complete, completely data from application. I mean, completely, of course, the data will be uh, consumed by application and we need to have some uh, use cases. But the key point is uh, keep the data of the patient. Uh, with a strong governance, and this is another key point uh, involving clinicians. This is not we want. We are not. We were not looking for a technical standard. We were looking for a, a standard um, to be adopted by clinicians, and uh, we will move uh, this standard to uh, speed up or to yeah try to speed up. The industry to this uh, to this approach to this approach to this uh, to to support this uh, continuous uh, innovation and continuous evolution. 
Uh, I have not say, but we decided uh, after uh, analysis uh, also with uh, external and international uh, experts, uh, we have decided to, to go to open EHR. Uh, if you are, uh, have a in special interest, we can discuss the, uh, why uh, open EHR. Uh, but mainly, but it doesn't mean that we we forget all the standards. I mean, uh, our project is to have a repository for uh, ma with maximum granularity for transactional usage. It means we are speaking about interoperability. We are speaking about inside our transactions, but. We know that there are other standards uh, that are moving, are, are, are really very well implemented for, for interoperability. And this is, this is, uh, these standards also uh, should be supported for, for, our, for our solution. Uh, key points for, uh, for selecting uh, opener, um, international community, uh, semantic approach, uh, vendor, that's important. Uh, minimum vendor lock-in, I mean, uh, I will not say uh, zero vendor lock-in, but it's important for, for us to be vendor independent, capacity, capability or capacity to, of uh, achieving the maximum granularity, and also not only about static information related with the, with the care plan, care pathway, uh, also uh, process support or uh, process representation support, okay? So uh, our approach, you will see uh, in this slide, our approach is a FOX approach. I mean, FIRE for interoperability, OPENER for interoperability and persistence of, uh, of our data model or our knowledge model, and XDS also for document, uh, document storage. We think that these uh, three standards are completely complementary, and uh, the tender we will see are oriented to this uh, to this complementary. If you look at, uh, at the at the information system master plan, you will see. Uh, okay, I will not through all, all these uh, all these figures, uh, all this uh, yeah, all this uh, schema. Uh, but uh, you will see on this plan that uh, this is the, the future view, the vision about to go, how could be uh, our platform in the next uh, three, four, five years. And what is dotted, what is inside the, the dotted, dotted area is what we are tendering now uh, with, this, uh, with this request for proposals. So you see, this tender for us is a key point for our for the development of our information system master plan. <clears throat> and now, thank you. It's the important thing now. <laughs> yeah, components. <laughs> components. Thank you. Next, we are going to explain the components of the tender. First, we would like to mention that the purpose of the tender includes to contract the service as data as a service. We consider it. You will consider it is necessary to have a single provider that offers the request end-to-end -end service from a data repository service based on open air specifications to the management to the management of this service and architecture layer technology and operations necessary to be able to provide and ensure the levels of service required in a transactional repository of this criticality, which is expected to cover the entire population served by the Catalan Health System. Data as a, uh, as a service builds on the concept that this data that this data product can be provided to the user on demand. That is the reason why we choose the data as a service. And this is how we have structured the tender. Here you have the eight more relevant points. Next, my colleagues will go through each section, determining the most interesting points of these sections. You will notice that we have point to the tender chapter next to the key point. Again, me. Yeah, again, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, but that, I, we think that this is important because if you look at the tender, when you look at the tender, you will see that we are speaking about repository services and about repository management services. Okay, if you read the tender, um, it's it's clearly uh, explained, but or you can ask uh, to the 
for to, through the formal uh, channel. But the, the idea is that uh, we are asking for the repository service. It means keep the repository live and running. I mean, with the with the requested uh, response time, uh, response time, and uh, service levels. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, answer, we can go through the next one. Yeah. yeah. Because, because it's the same. We can uh, we can keep the, we we want the service this service the repository service keep the repository up and running, servicing the open air API REST standards. Uh, inter interconnecting with the external services of uh, demography uh, means uh, master passion index or professional index or resource index and uh, terminology, SMOMED, law, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, also should take care of the security. Uh, we have, there will be an external security platform that will send to the repository the definition of the profile of this access, but the repository must check this profile and answer only to the information that was uh, uh, authorized. Monitoring, also the repository services uh, should, okay, we will not have the repository fully loaded uh, at point zero. Uh, they will be developed uh, uh, several uh, uh, massive insert insertion projects that should be uh, supported without affecting the existing services uh, or the existing uh, content, okay? And uh, this is repository service. Also, as we can say, we want to have also interoperability capacity, uh, capability uh, regarding HL7 and FIRE. This also, re this is, a, uh, this mapping should uh, run and should we, this repository uh, must answer FIRE uh, request and also in part of the information of this repository uh, will be extracted, must be extracted uh, for analytical purpose or for ad hoc, uh, or also uh, is necessary to have a, a environment for ad hoc uh, queries, AQL, without affecting the the standard repository uh, operations. This is repository service. I mean, keep the service up and running. And the repository management services um, wants to cover the, uh, the expert services related with the continuous evolution of the repository. It means uh, when we create, I'm going to add an example, when we create a, a new archetype, a new template, a new, blah, 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 a new, a new something, uh, this cannot be automatically loaded to the repository, but it could affect to the existing templates, to the existing archetypes, or could affect to the, uh, to the response time. And this is a service requested to the, to the provider. So this, this uh, set of repository management services uh, must check the, the quality, the reliability, uh, make the impact analysis, uh, keep the quality of the repository, the quality and the consistency of the repository in the continuous evolution that we will have. That's the idea of the repository management services. If you go to the next yeah. one, including thinking that uh, the, the repository will evolve in, in, in two ways. First, including new information from uh, the health Catalan, uh, the Catalan health systems, but also we are uh, adapting or we want to adopt an, uh, an standard open air that also is in continuous evolution. Moreover, the Catalan department, the Catalan health department is active part on the Open EHR uh, foundation. I mean, we want to uh, speed up the the, the evolution and uh, we need this expert assessment as repository management services to analyze what uh, what evolution could be interesting for us and uh, to check that proposed evolutions will not affect to the service of the uh, of the repository. Also, uh, as I said, we want to have uh, fire interoperability, but we want we don't want to ask for a universal fire interoperability. It's impossible. So the repository management service 
uh, answering to a request for creating a new mapping should uh, analyze, uh, uh, give the answer about how is the best way to do it, uh, or uh, uh, alerting about possible impacts on, on services. I mean, the idea of the repository management services is all the services required, required to keep the repository in continuous evolution up and running. I mean, both services are related, but at two different levels. Yes, I finish. <laughs> Yo, thank you. Uh, we also included in the in the tender uh, two innovation projects. Uh, due to the the, uh, the request for information we we had uh, a year ago, that uh, this uh, these two these two uh, innovation projects uh, uh, could not been covered by the the actual situation of the products in the market. So the first one was include a, a federation and synchronization project that uh, will uh, federate with other uh, open air based repositories. And the other one is uh, one access uh, optimized to the patient clinical situation summary. So the, the first uh, connection to the, to the patient that uh, will, uh, Retrieve the information from the database um, op optimally in, a, in, a, in an access to the, to the database. So the, the technical requirements is a uh, the service is an uh, thank you is an an end to end end to end platform. So so uh, this this must be managed in in all the components hardware software. And, and on operations, but uh, with the same provider. And we offer uh, uh, collocation from uh, one uh, or two of, of our data centers to, to provide the solution in here. The, the application uh, must be in, uh, highly available in, in two data centers and uh, the installation and configuration and post implementation that we uh, manage it in the, the contract. Now, the calend, uh, we have put some specific, specified milestones in the, in the, in the, in the tender. Uh, in month uh, zero, obviously contract signed. In month three, uh, the environment uh, must be, the, the description of the architecture must be validated and approved in month three. In month six, we uh, expect that repository service is up and running at least in one of the data centers. And in month 12, uh, had the, the platform fully, in, in fully working in two data centers offering high availability. So to the end of the contract, the service must be governed to SLA. Yeah, the, the contract length is uh, about 30 months uh, till, till the end of 25. With the extension of the protocol. Uh, also, at the end of the of the contract, in the event of, of termination, uh, we request the 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 bidders for for transfer the knowledge and the of the operations to to the the next provider. So, also we have to cover um, compliance and governance and governance model as as we have in all the. These systems place it in the, in the for the Catalan government that involves uh, quality and assurance, quality assurance, efficiency of the use of the resources, uh, innovation, and and knowledge. And also, uh, as as in every contact, we have man management committees that uh, could make decisions uh, involved to the to the contract. Uh, so there are uh, several service execution conditions that um, is related to how uh, systems are operated commonly in the 
the infrastructure in, in the Generalitat de Catalunya, the government of Catalonia. So as you can imagine, the service is qualified as, as the highest criticality. Uh, so uh, also we ask for uh, professional support for the products involved in the, in the, in the, in the platform. Also, we ask for uh, networking services. All the operations and, and the deployments must be managed in a, in a DevOps form. Operations, we ask also for operations automation, infrastructure as a code to, 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 uh, to get changes uh, as quickly as possible in the production environment. Also, we ask for observability in, in any level you can you can you can see here about distribution transactions distributed transactions monitoring of this infrastructure logs and tracing and also uh, we ask for auxiliary systems for the platform as LDAP uh, antivirus or NTP servers uh, the responsibility of the of the the platform uh, is is control and ensure that the service must be available accessible maintained updated, informed, and governed. Other service security uh, conditions, uh, the platform must uh, be, uh, in, uh, must be uh, governed as other mission critical systems that we have in government of Catalonia. Uh, then we have uh, some relationship with the mission critical applications control center. There's also an, an enterprise architecture governance. All the decisions of, of the architecture must be uh, managed and, and approved by the uh, corporate architecture. There's also um, a security uh, agency that is, is giving advice and controlling uh, the governance of the security. Uh, we also uh, uh, have some uh, requests about the organizational structure. The calendar we have uh, we have uh, talked uh, previously. Also, coordination with other teams as the customer support uh, actually in place in the in the in the government of Catalonia. Also, other ones as as methodology, uh, service continuity, quality assurance, and warranty of the of the works done with the relationship. About the SLAs, we have uh, introduced uh, 14 SLAs related to the repository service, as you can see in the list, and eight related for the security of the uh, repository. So um, um, the probably the most uh, important ones are the, the 13 and 14 is, is related to responsive times. This is a this is considered an, an, an operational repository uh, and the responsive times must be a, a first class citizen uh, with the repository. And that's the end of the presentation. <clears throat> so thank you all for your attention and we'll pass the control to Carol. Carol. Thank you so much uh, for the um, presentation, so thorough presentation of this uh, opportunity. Uh, we have some questions coming, and of course, given the fact that we, you might answer all of those questions, but I have uh, one question to you. Uh, do you plan to make analytical use of the repository clinical data? Mm. Okay, um, the repository is a uh, is uh, more more uh, focused to the tr transactional uh, activities. Uh, as part of the repository management services, as and part of uh, repository services, uh, is included the uh, data extraction and preparation for uh, external analytical uh, analytical environments. Also, we ask for a in the tender, we ask for a read-only uh, 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 instance. instance of the of the repository uh, to uh, to answer to ad hoc uh, queries or in the future. This is a personal opinion. This is not part of the tender. Uh, also for uh, analysis for machine learning and 
decision intelligent decision uh, decision tree. Yeah. All right, and then you also mentioned uh, sixteen at the very beginning, uh, sixteen thousand applications, and does it mean different software and entities? Uh, not exactly. Uh, software entities, yes. Uh, not it doesn't mean uh, sixteen thousand uh, software vendors. I mean we can have the same uh, software. Uh, in a frame, maybe in three instances, but with three different uh, configurations. Versions, no. with different, different, different versions. versions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and crazy. It's crazy. We know. We know it's crazy. <laughs> we, were, we were surprised when we made this analysis uh, preparing the information system master plan. All right. And then there was also another question, also uh, pretty at the beginning of your presentation. What is the nature of the interoperability platform? Is this provided by a third party? No, no it, it's included in the tender. I mean, uh, the tender uh, specified that the, the provider should uh, perform also the, for, for instance, fire or HL7 uh, uh, interoperability front end. Okay. Of course, not not uh, as I said, not universal. I mean, not not everything must be interoperable. It's part of the repository management services to define what uh, is included in this uh, interoperability. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And then there was also uh, you mentioned the Burrit uh, Burrit logic, and uh, not sure what it ah. meant with the Burrit yeah. logic. Implicit. Yeah, it means that the is hard coded. <laughs> It's what? Hard coded. Hard, hard coded. I mean. <laughs> it's, uh, it's completely um, mixed uh, business logic and, and data model. That's, okay. I'm sorry, sorry about that, but it's, it's implicit. It's, it's, it's for a uh, quarter point responding. Highly couplet. You don't know how to say. Yeah. Okay. I hope that this uh, helps our, our participants to understand. And then there is also uh, one more question. And for all the participants of this uh, webinar, uh, if you have a question, please put it yeah, in, the, we, in the in the in the in the Q and A. Sorry, Karina. Um, we, yes. we have that there is also uh, the the question four. Okay, you can ask the for the four. Uh, is, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let me let me uh, read the question then. Uh, yes. So there sorry. is one. Let me first uh, say say uh, finish. So. For to all the participants, if you have a question, please put it in the Q and A, and we will ask those questions. Uh, of course, I will say again, not all questions might be answered. This is the, the tender, so there is special uh, conditions uh, here that we can share the information. Um, and also, if you will not ask the question, the presenters will not tell you more. Uh, so just please do it. That's your option. Okay, so now, uh, how does the initial set of archetypes come into existence? I don't know if you can, if this is the question that you can answer. Yes, 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 yes. It's uh, through the repository management services. I mean, the, the first uh, the first activity of the repository management systems is validate. We have a definition of uh, of archetypes and templates uh, prepared, but should be accepted by the repository management service. I mean, it must be checked by the by the provider. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So maybe following on the on the repository, um, then I would have a question: Why is the repository management? Uh, why is the repository management services included in the same tender lot? Because uh, yeah, because the the idea is to. Uh, to keep the responsibility on the uh, single uh, provider. I mean, the repository management service, part, or a, a huge part, a very important part of the repository management services are the impact analysis of the validation and the keeping keep consistency on the repository. I mean, we think that it's better to have the same vendor responsible of the impact analysis, and after that, responsible that the service is answer is uh, acting as expected in the impact analysis. That's why we uh, mix it. We yeah. we match the same uh, tender. Sorry, maybe brilliant. And 
Yeah. All right. And then there is uh, at least at this moment, the last question, but maybe something will come uh, up still. Do you have your own terminology server and master patient index? Are you planning to change it in the context of this project? Uh, we have now a terminology server and a master patient index. And uh, that's, that's a good, a good uh, example because uh, we have the interface of these servers are fire. I mean, we have implemented master patient index uh, with fire and we are moving our terminology server uh, to fire. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good example of uh, the interoperability we were uh, speaking about. Okay. Working with a lot of standards at the same time, we are not uh, Taliban of open air. We are open to fire and other standards also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, this is all the questions we had. So uh, a lot and, and uh, you, you answered them all. I wonder if there are any more questions from our uh, participants. Uh, Stefan, you raised your hand, but if you could put the uh, comment in the in the uh, Q and A, we I'm happy to to uh, read this. Okay. Reminder of the deadline. If I remember correctly, that was twenty first of December. Is this correct? Yeah. 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 Is that correct? Is there yes. any uh, hour specific five? Uh, o'clock CT or it's, it's, it's 12, uh, 12 no. uh, PM. Yeah, zero, 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 zero. No, 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 it's 12 to yeah. PM. That's no, to PM. is it noon or is it midnight? <laughs> no, 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 it's noon. It's so noon, noon so okay, so it's uh, 12 or noon, middle of the day um, yeah. in uh, Barcelona, right? Time, so it's yes, CT time, time. okay. Yes. So it's 21st yes. of December, uh, noon, um, yeah. Barcelona time. Yeah. So yeah. if you, yes. Well, as you can see here, we have the tender link and the okay. email for the questions that we have, anyone had to the tender, they can send the a question to the uh, formal uh, way that is the email. Brilliant. So please, uh, everyone, take the, yeah. Okay, we got the thank yous for uh, explanation. So I hope you all managed to get the QR code and the link. And of course, as mentioned, this webinar is being recorded. So you will also receive the copy um, to the, um, yeah. Uh, the copy of this of this uh, webinar, so we can rewatch it and uh, find the answers to your questions, maybe. Right. This is okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. But we still have time, so if you still can ask uh, one or two questions. No, just just to to uh, uh, just to. No, 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 not clarify. Uh, put um, again on the table. We are moving to. Uh, uh, data as a service uh, to uh, data decoupling, uh, we are moving to, a, we think, to a very innovative way, not in the sense of uh, uh, secondary usage repository, I mean, not just for analysis, we are thinking on this repository for transactional usage. It, that, it, that is the reason why we are asking for so strict uh, service level. Because uh, someone could ask, okay, why are you asking for 49 seconds? Because we want to have a, a real uh, transactional services directly from the knowledge model. Mm -hmm. That's the approach. How much? Okay, there is a question coming, but still in pieces. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's. Uh, okay, will the repository support IPS? IP? IPS. Yes. So if I understand uh, well, uh, yeah, support IPS. Will the repository support international patient summary? Thank you, Stefan. Ah, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, the idea is, uh, but this is not part of the tender, but one of the things that uh, the repository management services uh, should uh, define is the way to extract data or to synchronize data. Remember that we have a 
an innovation project to synchronize uh, different uh, open air repositories. The idea is that at the end, this repository will be also the gold source for the international fashion summary. And to connect uh -huh. to Europe, the uh, VR health data space. Mm -hmm. Can you can you repeat on the European Health Data Space? Yeah, we are thinking it, 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 this is uh, not only international passion because we are working or we want to work uh, say, as we say uh, in a community uh, approach. We are working with other Spanish community also to to share not the data to share the that data modeling the, the knowledge modeling we will uh, develop to share to, to interchange to uh, take advantage one from the other. And also, we want to have the same uh, community activities with their with other countries. I mean, our our approach to be, to be very uh, aggressive. Uh, we want to speed up the international passion summary <laughs> through our standardization. Brilliant! Thank you so Not much. The, this is just a personal idea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, as I said, there is a lot of innovations going on there, so I, I think that uh, yeah, there is a good uh, opportunity to collaborate with you guys. Last question, and then we we close. Uh, so, will other regions in Spain use Open uh, EHR? Will other regions uh, in in Spain? We don't know. Uh, they are. We are uh, exchanging uh, analysis. We are exchanging experiences. At this moment, there is just this. There is a community of discussion. There is no mm -hmm. final decisions. But, but really, there is a community of discussion, not strictly about open air. I mean, uh, we uh, about how to uh, share uh, this uh, knowledge modeling. Brilliant. Maybe open air or maybe other option. We don't know. Thank you so much. Do you want to still add something uh, now, having one more minute? No, thank you very much to. Uh, to your organization for this opportunity mm -hmm. and uh well, thank you everyone to attend the, the tender yes <laughs> yeah thank you so much we have a lot of uh, thank yous coming from the our audience really insightful great we hope that a lot of also Others will come 21st of december uh, noon so if you have good treats if you want to have good christmas then <laughs> send and yeah i would like to Thank the uh, Catalan Health Department uh, team, Luis Valle, Tommy, uh, Tony Mira, and Daniel Alomar. They were with us today at this uh, webinar, uh, co-hosted by the European Connected Health Alliance and the Government of Catalonia with this exciting opportunity. So thank you all. Uh, have a good day and successful bit. Thanks to you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you very much. much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.